Proverbs chapter 27, verse 1, the Bible says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. I think as we are gathered across America and around the world, sitting in our living rooms or offices or maybe a hospital room, you may be watching today from a jail cell, but we all look forward to another day. We pray that our tomorrow is brighter so many times than our yesterday. It was just a few months ago in the month of January that we woke up and our tomorrow was filled with the news of COVID-19. Many days that has gone by since then, we have looked at the news and we pray that tomorrow things will be better. Well, I've got good news for you. We know who holds tomorrow and we know that he is the God which was and is and is to come. He's the God of the 30, the 60, and the 100. And I want you to understand that he's a God that's able to change your tomorrow. I think the question is, what's next? When will things change? I'm reminded of the musical Annie where she steps center stage and she began to sing, the sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sunshine. Just thinking about tomorrow clears away the cobwebs and the sorrows tell there's none. She goes on and sings about the gray days and how lonely days come, but on the, on the brink of tomorrow, everything can change. Dottie Rambo, one of the greatest songwriters that ever picked up a pen, she, she wrote these words, I didn't come here to ask you for anything. I just came to talk with you, Lord. You've answered a million prayers or more that I forgot to thank you for. I just came to talk to you, Lord. The chorus goes on and says, Maybe tomorrow there'll be trouble and sorrow, and a thousand teardrops may fall. But until I face tomorrow's task, I have no special favors to ask. I just came to talk with you, Lord. I want to declare to every one of you that's part of our Facebook family, part of our church family, that your tomorrow will be bright if you'll spend your today on your knees seeking the face of God. The Bible is very clear that God responds to our prayers. It is my plea and it is God's word that he will respond and perform his word in our life. The tragedy is so many people get caught up in their today that that they forget that God is able to give you a tomorrow. It is not guaranteed. It is not promised. But can I tell you today, God is not going to take you out until your assignment is finished. And so we must believe that regardless of what we're faced with, God is still in control. Somebody today, you may be in the middle of a situation. It, the virus might have touched your family. You may be wondering what you're going to do. Your history of yesterday is nothing like what you're believing leaving God for on your tomorrow, but I must let you know that there is a God that is able to take care of what you can't see. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, faith is the substance, it's not just any faith, but now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I want to share with you a few things before I get into the meat of my message today that I want you to think about. I want you to look at where you are today and know that God's got big plans for your future. The first thing that you got to do is realize that you got to quit staring at your past. You got to quit looking looking at what happened yesterday and be like Paul in the book of Philippians chapter 3 where Paul declares brethren I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I must do forgetting what is behind. Now what you've got to understand is you can never get until you forget. You can't live your life according to yesterday. You can't live your life according to the pains of and the problems of your past but you have to understand that when you look at your past it will mess up your future. Refuse to be Lot's wife. Refuse to be a monument to her past. Refuse to live your life looking back. Uh, you know, Paul said this, this one thing I do, I must 
forget. I got to forget about what people said about me. I got to forget, forget about what they've done to me. I have to forget about where I missed it and the things I would have done and my failures. I got to forget all of that. And I want to encourage everyone today to do three things with your past. There's three things you can do. One of them is you can nurse it. You can look at your past and you can keep bringing it up and bringing it up and you can nurse your past and what you nurse will grow. Or you can rehearse it. Talk about it all the time from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. I'm here to tell you sometimes we need to turn off, off, the, off the bad news and get in the good news. Sometimes you need to turn off all of the ABC, CBN. You got you to gotta turn it all off and you got to put your faith and your confidence in the Word of God and know that there is some good news. The good news is he's still a healer. The good news is he's still a miracle worker. The good news is there's not a virus that he is still not the healer of. And when we understand that, it will position us for a joy that comes from within inside of us and a joy that will give us the strength that we need to make it. So number one, don't keep nursing it. Number two, don't keep rehearsing it. Number three, you need to do this. You got to disperse it. Get rid of the memories of yesterday. Don't allow the memories of your yesterday to mess with your tomorrow. I wish you'd help me today. God's got big plans for you. God's got big plans for you. Pastor, but you don't know where I'm going through. Why don't you look at what David penned in the 30th Psalm? For his anger endureth but for a moment in his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Your tomorrow can be different than your yesterday. The reason is because Hebrews 13 says, Christ Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, sometimes we need to stop and look back and declare to our past, you're over it's past. That means it's no longer in front of you. When you begin to look and become confident, as Paul says, being confident of this very thing, he that hath begun a good work in you will bring it to pass. Look what David said. He's a lamp under my feet and a light under my path. A lamp shows me where I'm at. The light shows me where I'm going. So you got to remember that you can't keep Rehearsing your past. Number two, quit comparing yourself to others and know that you are uniquely made for God's purpose in this day and you will form and you will fashion and you will become what he wants you to be and you'll be a blessing in the lives of others in your tomorrows. Galatians says, but let every man prove his own work. Quit worrying about where you failed. Quit worrying about what's gone wrong in your life. Let's talk about tomorrow. Tomorrow can be the blind date for you singles that you've yet to meet. It can be a cake that you've yet to taste, a book you've yet to, to write, a song you've yet to sing, a gift that is yet to be opened. When you look at your tomorrow, you have to understand you can't quit. You can't quit today. Second Chronicles 2020. We're living in the year 2020, and we are looking at some things that we did not expect in our year of 2020. The book of 2 Chronicles 20, 20 says that if you'll believe the prophets, you'll, you'll prosper, and if you'll believe the word of God, you'll be established. I want to look at a little passage of Scripture that a lot of times we, we really don't give much thought to, but it's 2 Chronicles 20, verse 16. Here's that word again. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz. You will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourself, stand you still, and see the salvation of the Lord. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not. Don't be dismayed. By tomorrow you'll go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. I want you to know that preceding the 20th chapter of 2 Chronicles is the 19th chapter. The 19th chapter in the 11th verse of Scripture, these words declare the man of God. The Lord shall be with the good. Underline that, score that, remember that. The Lord shall be with the good. Our nation and our world is straight away from the fundamentals of the faith. 
We have seen people that have now taken upon themselves to declare that, that, that America is no longer a nation under God. But you have to understand that when we get away from the principal thing, God has given us during this season an opportunity for a reset. We can't, we can't keep living like we've lived. They're talking about new normals, but I believe that God is getting ready that the new normal will be. Bars will be shut down not because of viruses. Bars will be shut down on Sunday because people want to go to church. I believe that we'll see hospital beds that are filled now will be empty because he's the Lord God that heals us of all of our diseases. But a lot of times when people live in prosperity and they think life is as good as it gets, they forget the God that has blessed them. So in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 19, God says, the Lord shall be good, but he set out some perimeters for them to live by. First of all, there was a man that had a vision and a man that had a burden for the people. And so Jehoshaphat, when he comes on the scene, he, re, he restores what has been out of order. He now brings back into order. And that is, that is all in, in chapter 19. Uh, the fear of the Lord was restored. Faithful service was restored. Fervency of heart was restored. And the people of Jehoshaphat, he began to bring them back to the place that they had gotten away from. I believe everyone watching today, however you're watching, that you realize that for you to go forward in your faith, there has to be a new dedication. For you to be able to excel in the day in which we live, you can't do it off of yesterday's promises. And you have to understand that God is a great God and he will do great things in our life. Second Chronicles 19, 11, the Bible says, Deal courageously and the Lord shall be good. Deal courageously. We have to stand up for our faith. We have to believe what the word of God says. The Bible says from the beginning of times, the heavens suffer violent. The violent take it by force. Be bold. Be diligent. And God will be with you. He simply wants you to do your best. And then you look at chapter 20. Then it came to pass. The armies were hired against him. There was the Amorites, the Hittites, the Jebusites. They come to battle. They're in a place where Jehoshaphat, there's no way that he can make it. The nation has stability, prosperity. Their faith is restored in God. They've been reestablished, and now here comes an enemy to try to stop them. They did what was right. Have you ever done what was right, and you ended up in a fight? Have you ever done what was right, and everything that could go wrong did go wrong? Have you ever stood strong in your faith only to find out that what you were standing on and the world in which you were living in looked nothing alike? Someone here today, you could tell your story. You could answer the questions. What is your tomorrow look like compared to your yesterday? But I want you to do something if you will. There's a lot of things. My dad used to sing a song. Many things about tomorrow. I don't seem to understand but I know who holds tomorrow because I know who holds my hand. Let's see how God can affect your, song, your, your tomorrow, how your song can be changed. Second Chronicles 20, verse 3, And Jehoshaphat feared. He set himself aside to seek the Lord. Several things that you need to understand. If you will read all of these scriptures, read, read, uh, uh, read 10 scriptures beginning at verse uh, at verse uh, uh, 3. Read 10 scriptures. You know what you're going to find when you read those 10 scriptures? You're going to find that out of those 10 scriptures, out of 10, now listen to this, out of 10 scriptures, 10 scriptures, 8 of them deals with the blessing of God and the solutions to your problems and the blessing concerning your tomorrow and only 2 of them deal with the problem. I want to say that again. Out of the 10 verses found in 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, beginning in verse 3 to verse 13, out of those scriptures, out of, the, out of those scriptures, 10 deals with solutions where 2 deals with problems. Let me give you a few things to write down, if you will. Number one, he feared what he faced. We understand the power of fear. For many, it's crippling, especially during the time in which we live. 
We're, li- we're seeing people that, that are afraid. And God did not give us the spirit of fear, but here's what he did. He feared before he faced his problems. Number two, he set himself to fast and to pray. He set himself, which to set yourself means that you are fastened. You're unmovable. You're like a a nail in a sure place, like a rock that can't be moved. He feared, number one. Number two, he set himself. He was fastened. Number three, he fasted, and he was willing to give up today what he was believing for tomorrow. And the fourth thing that you'll find that, you'll, that, that, that he did is every time uh, uh, he began to move forward, everyone became a part of the process. Do you know how you defeat the enemy? Through unity. When we come together in a spirit of unity, things begin to happen. Now look at the passage. Chapter 19, they're in a backslid place. They begin to come back to God. God courageously brings them back in. Chapter 20, they're living in a place of peace and prosperity. God is doing great things. And then all of a sudden, here comes the enemy. And then after the enemy begins to talk and he makes his attack, there was a shift in the middle of this. And I believe God can give us a shift in the middle of what we're seeing as a nation and a world. Our best is yet to come. Hiding behind your door is not going to be your new normal. Wondering if you're going to make it is not going to be your new normal. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked is being laid up for the righteous. I'm talking to people that are being blessed right now more than they were uh, in their previous days. God is able to do it. But I want you to look at a shift here. 2 Chronicles 20, 14. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jael, the son of Mateah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. I'm about to shout because I know where I'm going. And he said, hearken all Judah, you inhabitants, and you King Jehoshaphat, don't be afraid or dismayed by reason of this multitude. Tomorrow, did you get that? Tomorrow. Tomorrow things are going to change. Tomorrow, God's going to give you a plan that your enemy will be defeated. Tomorrow, blessings are going to come. Who is this guy, Jehazel? What is his pedigree? What is, what, 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 is, what is it that gave him the power to speak? If you will notice, the Bible says that Jehazel was in the midst of the congregation. He wasn't on the stage. He wasn't in a, in a seat of uh, pomp and circumstance. He wasn't in a high place. He was in the middle of the people. I like what Bishop Jake said the other day. He says, God has got the church in a place where there are no mega pastors. We're all pastoring little churches. Basically what he was telling us is the church is in the home and everybody has an opportunity to succeed. I love the man of God and his wisdom. And I want you to understand that Jehazel, as he begins to speak, God comes upon him and he says, tomorrow you're going to go out against them. They'll come up by the cliff of Ziz. You will find them at the end of the brook. They'll be by the wilderness and you will not need to fight this battle. Set yourself, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I got a feeling in America, I got a feeling in our world that God is getting ready to raise up some Jehazels. The devil thought, if I can get them out of the church building, I'll steal their praise. But what he doesn't understand is he just intensified our praise. This building isn't the church. We are the church. And upon this rock, Christ said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell, COVID-19, heart trouble, sugar diabetes, flu, whatever it is, will not prevail against it. This is our hour. This is the time when revival will come. This is a time of a great uh, restoration and a great move of God. Jehazel, what empowered him? What gave him the power to stand and begin to speak? And not only what gave him the power to speak, what gave him the authority to stand in the middle of a kingdom filled with authority and declare, thus saith the Lord. Well, i got to tell you a little bit about this guy. Jehazel, what do we know about him? He was a part of the crowd. Who is this guy? Why did the Spirit come upon him? Well, let's look back. He is the son of a man by the name of Zechariah. Zechariah's name means God remembers. He's the son of Benaniah. God has created. He's the son of Jehel. 
carried by God. The son of Matea, God's gift. His daddy, God remembers. His granddaddy, God has created. His great granddaddy, carried by God. His great, great, great daddy, granddaddy, God's gift. Let me say this again. His, don't miss this, he's the son of Zechariah, God remembers. The son of Benoni, God has created. The son of Jehel, carried by God. The son of Matea, God's gift. Wow, listen to what that means. He's the son of God's gift. He is daddy is God remembers. His granddaddy is God created. His great granddaddy carried by God and his great great granddaddy is God's gift. You have to understand he was lost in the crowd but there was something that had been poured into him from one generation to another. Something that had been poured into him by his father, by his grandfather, by his great grandfather and no doubt words of wisdom that were come down from his great great grandfather and it was just the time and God's anointing and his appointing that in the middle of that chaos what had been poured into him was going to come forth and victory was going to follow. I wish somebody would shout today. Why I'm excited is listen. I remember things my dad poured into me that I've poured into my daughter. And I know there are men watching and women watching today that the transgenerational blessing, the Bible says a wise man will leave an inheritance to his children and his children's children. And we're living in that season that what you have poured into your children is getting ready to come out. It's getting ready to manifest. The blessing of God is going to flow. And you have to understand this. You will face some problems in your life, but there is peace that is available. You'll look at things that can take your breath away but you got to learn to refocus and there are times that you will look and say I don't feel like this is my place there are hours when God will reposition you but at the end of the day blessing is going to come and that valley where they fought was the valley of Barak which means the place of blessing so pastor what are you telling me I'm telling you that the sun will come out tomorrow. I'm telling you there may be some troubles and sorrows. I'm telling you that we serve a God that is able to cause his grace and favor to abound in your life regardless of what it looks like. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5 and I'll close. And Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow Tomorrow, tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. I want you today to think about this. As we have gathered around a television, a computer, a smartphone, to hear the Word of God, that Word of God is not to be in vain. But that word wants to ignite, cause a shift in your life. I'm reminded in the book of 1 Samuel, the 11th chapter, there was a man by the name of Jabesh Gilead that was faced with an enemy. The enemy wanted to take out their eye as a reproach. And this man begins to pray by the name of Jabesh Gilead, and he goes to the house of Saul. And he asks for help because he's in a bad place. We got people in our world that's in a bad place. Some of them are in hospital rooms. Some are in isolation. Some of them are trying to figure out how they're going to make ends meet with their family. They're in a bad place. And they're in the middle of a battle. But I want you to notice that in the book of 1 Samuel, the 11th chapter, the Bible says this, verse 9. And he said to the messengers that came, Thus shall ye say unto the men of Jabesh Gilead, Tomorrow, by the time the sun be hot, you will have help. And the messengers came and showed themselves to the men of Jabesh, and they were glad. Tomorrow, by the time the sun be hot, you'll have help. Somebody said, Pastor, where's my help? Maybe you hadn't got hot enough. 
He knows what you can take. And then he knows also that with every temptation, there's a way out. And Jesus Christ isn't a way. He is the way. I'm going to ask you to do something today. Everyone watching on Facebook, if you're watching today, and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, will you take just a moment to make the wisest decision you can ever make on this side of earth? It's the wisest decision. It doesn't cost you anything except surrendering your heart back to the God that created you. Gave his son to die for you. That you can have life and have it more abundantly. I want you to pray a simple sinner's prayer with me. And if you pray this prayer with me, would you, would you simply respond on this Facebook and say, I accepted Christ today? And maybe you're watching for the first time. We'd love to know where you're from, watching from. We'd love to have you become a part of our family, extended family through Facebook. We're going to be praying for you going to be believing God for you. So I want to pray right now. If you don't know Jesus Christ, we're praying first for salvation and then we're praying for healing and we want you to be in agreement with us. We're going to believe God to heal your finances, heal your marriage, heal your children. Let's pray. Fathers, we come to you today. We want to thank you that you are a God that is a way maker. And like the children of Israel They went to bed one night, slaves in bondage, and the next day they woke up free and wealthy. You're able to cause our tomorrows to change. For Moses and the children of Israel facing a Red Sea while they slept, by the time their tomorrow got there, You would roll their waters back. They walked across on dry ground. Like Jabesh Gilead, somebody's in a battle, and it's hot. Send them help. And Lord, help comes whenever we accept you as our Lord and Savior. Your word says that if we'll call, you'll in no wise cast us out. So we call today. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And you said, if I would come, you would in no wise cast me out. So I come. I come bearing my sins. I come with all of my faults and my failures, but I don't leave with them. I lay them at the foot of the cross. I believe that you are the Son of God, that you died and rose again for for me to have life in it more abundantly and eternal life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And from this day forward, I know that you hold my days in your hand and I will serve you from this day forward. Lord, for those who have loved ones that are sick with this virus, we curse the cause of it. We declare right now that the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the shed blood will eradicate every bit of COVID-19 Healing is the children's bread. This thing has an expiration date, and we thank you like tomorrow. You can wipe it out. Bring healing to those that are sick. Prosperity to those that are in need. We give you the glory and the praise. Hey, we love you so much. Don't forget to join us tonight. Uh, We got all four of the pastors going to be on. Great topics. You'll be blessed to the Lord 9 o'clock, every night at 9 o'clock. Then every morning, 7 a.m., You don't want to miss it. You'll be blessed of the Lord. We love you. God bless you. And let's just worship the Lord together with Pastor Kelly. I'm not going back. Moving ahead. Here to declare to you. My past is over in you. Things are made new. Surrender my life. I'm moving, I'm not going back, moving ahead, here to declare to you, my past is over in you, things are made new, surrender my life to Christ.
Christ. I'm moving, moving forward.